other one. And I want to show you the deco plane curve that I was using in this performance. These are um, bicycle. And I want to apologize for using all those three decks of playing cards, uh, three or four, uh, wasting because in that performance it's not complicated, but I was trying to show or to do a performance just for TV, you know. And in the process, I want to show the experiences that I get when I rip off the cards. And uh, I don't recommend the tally hole uh, because when they are brand new, they are really slippery, at least for a good grip for our first performance, which I will explain later on uh, how it works and what I mean by getting a good grip. And this one, uh, these are a little stiff. Um, not much, uh, just a little bit, so it was a little bit more complicated to rip them off. And these ones, the rest of the playing cards, bicycle, these are easy to, to rip off, you know, using three, three cards. But uh, if you have uh, all playing cards, bicycle, that's gonna be okay because sooner or later uh, they won't work for performances anymore because they are too old. So the old cards may become handy sooner or later to perform this kind of effect because when they are too old they won't work properly. And the thumb, it hurts a lot because I was ripping all those cards. And obviously it hurts um, because you actually rip them. So when you bend them, try to get too black or too red and the other one in the opposite color so that's the one is going to get uh, linked and notice when I bend the cards they are not uh, perfectly uh, square they are a little bit tilt to the side okay just like so so when you put them back to back it's going to look like two different cards because it looks uh, diagonal like a cross and this is what I recommend people to do because this is not that difficult when you use all playing cards. They are easy to rip off. Uh, just pinch really hard and leave about uh, one centimeter. Once you get the first rip, that's gonna be too easy for the rest of the card to get ripped off. On the way around, be careful. Okay, now the one is a different color than the rest. Notice the audience is facing that way. This is the magician's view. Okay, so you can follow. Two cards uh, facing me, one facing the audience, and this is the cards, and the jokers, and the ones I'm gonna bend. Let me show you first how it looks. Okay, this is the condition. And in the performance, you know, when you are on TV, you can show this card at a decent distance and they don't see the scene. And in some cards that you see on the floor, uh, I tried to get a grip and the tally hole, they were too slippery, impossible for me to get a grip at a decent speed and to cover it without the hand. That's why I pretty much waste the, all the tally holes. And the B, those are the ones that gave me better results. But sooner or later I fail because I want to show the card without uh, covering so they don't see the scene. And you know, that's kind of complicated when you try to do TV performances without the audience. And by using camera cuts, later on magicians, they do mix uh, real performances with uh, and just for TV performances. Anyway, let me get again how you get into the grip. Notice the jokers, they are perfectly aligned. Okay. So the middle finger and the thumb, they get in the middle. The third finger is holding that cut in the front so it doesn't go any further. And the index is also in the front so they don't move any, any further back. Try to show this the front without bending the front card yet. Now, the entire folding process goes with my right hand, okay? Just pinch with a thumb and third finger. I'm sorry, the middle finger, okay? The other hand, my left hand, just covering the front. Okay, and you can shake it a little so you don't grab this card yet because you don't want to display these two cards using both hands for too long. I bend two cards with my right hand up and down. You cover with this hand before you even get a grip. 
so you can fold these uh, edges as tight as you can. Then you fold the card to the front, make sure the card is ready uh, right at this point. Now for a card not to fall, that's why you want uh, to have this card, the one behind, a little bit above, okay? No right in that, on the edge because the card may fall and they may see the seam. So right there is gonna be okay. Next, you put the hand in the front. You can wave a little as if it's melting. And then you put it on the table, face up or face down for a second linking part. Now for this second part, I recommend to have it on your mouth. Okay, it's easier and it's better and more secure. Now let's suppose you have it in your mouth. So when I expand this, you go for it and link it again right here but your hand in the front is covering which is a more secure way to link the card for a second time now the way i did it in the performance it was using this left side again but i tried that the bottom piece is a little bit uh, above the top one and from the top the audience they don't really see this huge gap okay so when you go for it you don't need to cover it because it's going to be quite fast you just swing keep swinging because it's non-stop motion and uh, they won't see the scene however you want to put it on the table you can put it on the table but keep your other hand in front to scoop or to pick up the card let's say this is the table and without covering as i did it in a performance it was just like this it was taking the card and pick it up and as soon as you get it cover again in the front but again you don't want to keep both hands on the on this card for too long you start looking suspicious then you gesture as you really want to rip it off try to have this bottom card above the other so when you separate them there is some sort of here a uh, snap take this card out very carefully and make sure they don't see the top and just cover immediately and fold it okay then you unfold the top or oh, the one in the back then you unfold the second one when you unfold the second one this is where the second hand comes handy and cover everything once again I fold it then unfold the one in the back then when I unfold the second one I put the hand on front okay I snap them and I put them in the front again and then show that it is no ribs the entire card is in one piece so those two link performances that's gonna be good enough so the both hand situation doesn't look suspicious so you can just link it and go for it for a next step the way you end up with this performance is better than the way I used to the way I used to instead of bending these two cards to the back and then unfolding the one in the back and then the one in the front covering that's the way I, uh, I recommend it because the way I used to do it I was putting here again in the thumb and the middle finger and then I was trying to unfold it right in front of the spectator covering in the front so that's what I used to do which I think is a little bit more inefficient Now, if you are a, a kid, for example, it's going to be really hard, I believe, for most of you to rip off three cards at once. So you can rip off two, for example. Make sure you put them like this. There you go. And give the other one to the spectator so they can do the same as you just did. So it's going to be easier, uh, but three cards is not that complicated. You can just give it a centimeter and I think these colors is going to give you better results to conceal the scene because I was trying to do it without covering. Now this is uh, an easy effect however I don't recommend to take your hand off just because it looks suspicious you can shake it and keep your hand relaxed. Shake it in the front. Okay so you can fold it Again, notice how this is a little bit above. 
keep the, the card right there. Okay. Swing it a little. And wait. On the cover. Open it up. Then go for a second link. You can just fold both sections and then fold the one in the back. Then the one in the front. And take them apart and put them back again. And show the all in one piece. And that's it.